Hello there kitties, I'm Karin, the vacuum to witch and the crazy cat lady. And today, I'm happy to tell you that this little project of mine has come to an end. This is the Semtron 220 electronic calculator from the German Democratic Republic. I've had it since uh, summer last year. I got it from the Book Art Museum. And I was fascinated by this machine. I thought uh, it would be a great restoration project, but it was uh, the most challenging restoration project in my lab so far. Turning this thing on. At the beginning we need to clear the memory. We are good on to the, the kind of, uh, of memory this thing has. How it is constructed, how it is addressed. Because I learned tons of stuff um, about the construction, the design, the operation of uh, those vintage calculators. This is a uh, fixed point uh, machine. Let's set it to 11th uh, place uh, and try to enter a number. Easy as a pie! <laughs> Look at that! Thing of beauty, joy forever. I had a problem with, um, with the machine. Uh, at, uh, at one point uh, I couldn't uh, enter any number at all. And then... Uh, then I got a uh, set of uh, spare modules, the complete uh, arithmetic logic unit. Unfortunately, some of the modules from um, the spare ALU were damaged as well. But uh, by substituting one of them, uh, I was able to enter numbers, but... Uh, 8 and 9 were not working. I will tell you why they were not working at all. Because it takes a deep dive into the machine's design and construction. And for the moment, the machine performs all the operations um, it was designed to perform. It can add, it can subtract, um, it can work on uh, fixed uh, decimal point numbers. Uh, it can multiply, it can divide and it can uh, exponentiate. And apart uh, from the main operational register in the memory, it has three additional registers uh, where you can uh, store the numbers and recall them with deletion or, or without deletion. In order to store a number in, in uh, this uh, extra register, we need to press uh, plus uh, if it was zero. And then it will be added to the zero that was stored there. And in order to recall it, um, press the arrow down. Let's recall um, the number from the second register. Zero. The third one will also be zero. And uh, the first one should store the pi. Let's recall it. Easy as a pi. 
let's uh, copy the pie to the third register. Recall the second, recall the third. But if I want to recall the first uh, with deletion, press the asterisk. We'll see the number brought to the display. But if I uh, press the recall uh, key again, it will be zero. So the content of um, this register is uh, now cleared. And uh, let's move on to doing something uh, a little bit different. Let's add some numbers. One, two, three, plus, four, five, six, and uh, you have to be careful because um, this operates a little bit different than uh, a uh, typical uh, modern calculator. You have to press uh, plus or minus uh, after every number you enter. So uh, one, two, three, plus, uh, four, five, six, plus. Equal sign 579, the sum of the numbers. And if I want to add uh, some more, let's add 21. Six hundred. So you can uh, treat um, the the outcome of the previous operation just as if you treat uh, the number you just uh, entered from the keyboard try dividing it by three what's interesting now is that uh, you don't have to press the divide sign uh, after uh, the number you divide um, something by. One time is enough. Press the equal sign. Hmm. This is a little bit unexpected but also pretty sensible because uh, Having set the decimal point, the number will be 200.0. But uh, if I did uh, integer adding and subtraction, I, uh, I had the integer number at the end. Uh, that's a little bit inconsistent, but uh, it would be it uh, it would uh, move the integer part uh, if I uh, press the comma key and to make it uh, point zero. Anyway, let's uh, get back to integer operations. And do some multiplication. How much is 23 times 6? Hundred thirty-eight. Yeah. And now um, the peculiarities uh, of exponentiation. Let's use the good old powers of 2. So we enter the number 2 press the multiplication key that's uh, that's pretty peculiar and then press the exponentiation key 2 to the power of 2 
to the power of 3, 4, and so on, 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 and so on. So, unlike um, the modern calculators where you enter the base of, um, of the power, then the exponentiation key and then the exponent, you have to press uh, the exponentiation key as many times uh, as your exponent is uh, minus one because um, that one was taken care of by the multiplication key. So, if you haven't read the instructions manual and uh, are dealing with the Semtron uh, for the first time, it will be confusing to use. But uh, what is uh, way more interesting is what's inside. And uh, let's take it to the bench. And here we are at the bench with the Semtron again, lifting the main cover. It is uh, made of aluminum and attached with two M4 boards uh, on the back side. This reveals um, the arithmetic logic unit. It heats up pretty considerably. Then there's uh, also the power supply block. It's a classic power supply, none of that switching mode rubbish. It has a huge uh, power transformer. It has a uh, voltage regulator using pretty big electrolytic caps and uh, silicon diodes. It has a heatsink on the side with, uh, with the pass transistors. Uh, there's one more pass transistor on the, on the bottom side of, uh, of the calculator. It's, it's right here under, under this cover. Insulation falling out. It's not the electrons that fall out. So the arithmetic logic unit has uh, 12 boards that perform uh, different functions. I made a uh, board extractor out of an old uh, bicycle spoke. Let's pull out the first one, because uh, it has something very interesting in it. Yes, this is the memory board. This is the ferrite core memory. Those blocks, uh, they are the read amplifiers, uh, because uh, the ferrite core memory has uh, four layers. And uh, through each one of those layers, uh, there's a uh, wire passing through all the ferrite cores. This wire is used for reading the content of the memory cell. After it, uh, it changes the, the polarity of the magnetic field in the core. 
I uh, I won't uh, explain the exact uh, principle of operation of the ferrite core memory because uh, there have been uh, lots of videos uh, on the subject uh, already. But I will explain uh, how uh, this ferrite core memory is addressed and controlled. There are also uh, two additional circuits on this board. They control the inhibit lines uh, on uh, two of the four layers on, of the ferrite core memory. The remaining inhibit controls uh, are located on the second board. Together with uh, all other addressing controls uh, for the core memory, there's a lot of control amplifiers. And in order to fix the calculator, I had to map all the all the blocks uh, from the schematics. to where they are found in the board because um, they would uh, certain uh, certain symptoms um, would be characteristic of um, read circuitry or write circuitry it would be characteristic of uh, a particular part of the ferrite core memory or the control circuitry. So, knowing uh, what uh, what digits are missing, or knowing uh, that uh, I don't have uh, certain positions on the display and uh, other positions are working, I can use the I can use this knowledge to determine. What uh, what part uh, of the memory has failed, and uh, this uh, this part uh, has two inhibit control uh, amplifiers uh, for the for the plane uh, of uh, the the highest bit and uh, the lowest bit. And then uh, we've got for addressing <coughs> addressing lines uh, if I uh, if I took a note of uh, of what uh, what exactly those uh, those lines uh, mean uh, Z8 S, Z8 S negative, um, Z8 L and Z8 L negative. They correspond to the wire spacing for the upper and lower half uh, of uh, of the register. Then uh, as for as as for L, that would that would correspond to the vertical halves uh, of the of the registers. S is one, S is two, S is three, and uh, S is four would be the pairs of bits. So. That's pretty complicated, but uh, understanding what happens in uh, the control circuitry and how it affects uh, the displayed digit, how it affects the content of the memory, it's crucial to repairing the, the board, it's crucial to locating the damage. And I had uh, both of the memory controller fail 
but uh, in different ways. So, by swapping those boards, I could, I could um, use the additional memory registers uh, to diagnose uh, whether the problem was with the read circuitry or with the write circuitry. And uh, by uh, finding what part of the memory didn't work, uh, I could uh, follow the malfunction to the particular block on the, on this uh, controller board. And I managed to fix uh, both of them. And, uh, the damage itself was trivial. One transistor was uh, was failed uh, shorted and uh, one transistor was failed open. But it was determining which transistor has failed that took uh, the most time, effort and and also mental health. <laughs> Working on system of this complexity, I also spotted one damage. Take a look. Look at this. Uh, had a broken uh, trace on the printed circuit board uh, that would cut the memory power from the controls and I was pretty happy when I spotted this thing and repaired it because I thought I would be good and uh, and that uh, the module would be repaired and start, wo start working or was I surprised? It didn't. This is the, the third module. It, uh, it's mainly flip-flops uh, storing, the, storing the bits uh, in, the, in the registers uh, out of the ferrite core memory. Some more Probably flip-flops, flip I don't remember all that well, on the fourth board. With uh, a lot more diodes, because it runs on diode and transistor logic. How the diode and transistor logic works, uh, you might ask. I've taken uh, some notes on this thing. Then uh, the Centron uh, works on uh, the negative voltage uh, as the high state, rather than uh, plus five in uh, in TTL or anything uh, like uh, plus five, plus twelve in CMOS. Uh, or plus 3.3 3 .3 or plus uh, 1.8 volts in uh, modern logic. It uses minus 12 volts as the high state and zero as the low state. So uh, the R gate uh, would be Either either one of the inputs uh, must be negative in order for the output to be negative. And uh, the conjunction, the, the end gate, uh, would mean that, uh, well, I translated to, um, this to positive voltage uh, diode logic uh, 
negative voltage uh, the R gate uh, it would do away with uh, with the resistor and the the conjunction it's basically um, either input uh, if any of the inputs uh, is uh, close to zero then the output will also be close to zero it will it will also have a uh, pull down resistor to minus 12 and of course there are inverters there are flip flop, -flop uh, circuits the flip-flop circuit is controlled from a uh, differentiating uh, circuit from the input. Uh, basically, the, the differentiating circuit is also uh, quite interesting because it passes a uh, positive pulse to the base of the transistor, switching you off. But the positive pulse will only happen if uh, this uh, is not negative and if the input changes state uh, from negative then the high state to, to zero the low state so uh, this goes positive this is positive and from the combination of the tools, we've got enough voltage to have a uh, positive spike uh, passing through the diode. And uh, throwing the transistor out of conductions. This will go negative. And uh, this transistor that was not conducting before will start conducting because the negative uh, voltage spike uh, will pass through the capacitor. Since it will go negative, the potential here will become close to zero. And we've got uh, the positive going pulse uh, through the capacitor, reinforcing the, the previous uh, positive pulse here on the base and this will basically be in the stable state until until there is a uh, positive going pulse uh, through through those uh, differentiating uh, circuits going on the base And let me show you something different of how the memory is addressed. But first, let's see the memory itself. Because I, unfortunately I had um, the ferrite core memory fail on me with magic smoke. One of the wires uh, in the memory, it, uh, it has a uh, current limited uh, limiting circuit, uh, current limiting uh, resistor in line, but for some uh, unknown reason, I don't know why, it was not, uh, it was not my fault, um, the resistor probably got shorted or the voltage uh, on the on the line uh, was uh, excessive uh, probably also because um, of the third tr transistor on um, the control board look at this maybe a little bit blurry maybe some additional light will help
The animal is unfortunately burned through its molten from the excessive current uh, on, uh, on this loop. This means that um, the whole line I will have to redo the, the whole line in order to repair the ferrite core memory. Maybe I will make a video on this because uh, this is gonna be a fascinating process. But um, the memory organization it uses uh, it uses uh, six registers uh, of two lines each. So uh, this would be the first register. This would, this would be the second, third, fourth, uh, fifth, and sixth. And we've got eight columns. Bit zero towards seven and uh, eight uh, towards uh, fifteen. Those um, those columns and uh, the particular bits of the register correspond <coughs> to the positions uh, on the Nixie display, and the numbers. Uh, in the memory are stored across the planes. We've got four planes and they correspond to the bits in BCD, binary coded decimal numbers. If you know the computer stuff and digital electronics, you will know how the numbers are encoded uh, as BCD. Basically it uses uh, four bits, uh, one for, for ones and uh, first bit is for ones and second bit is for twos and uh, the third bit is for fours and uh, the last bit is for eights. Uh, and it allows storing decimal or hexadecimal numbers. In case of this calculator, decimal is used, uh, hexadecimal uh, is not. Uh. So uh, how, how the bit selection in the number works uh, when storing uh, data in the memory. There is uh, there's a condition uh, that has to be fulfilled uh, when uh, storing the contents of uh, a single uh, memory cell, a single core. Namely, the total current uh, passing through the core must be equal or, or greater than uh, the current uh, necessary for switching the polarity of uh, the magnetic field. And this is done by uh, passing uh, several uh, smaller currents uh, simultaneously through the car. All this while uh, there can be also uh, currents in uh, the opposite direction that block the process of uh, storing data and uh, this uh, precise uh, phenomenon is uh, used in uh, in uh, all those planes uh, because every single one of them has uh, a uh, line passing through all the cars 
to be honest, uh, it has two lines um, passing through all the cards of the plane. One of those lines is the sense line uh, for reading. The other one is the inhibit line uh, for writing. And uh, if uh, current passes through the inhibit line, the core will not be written into, even though uh, the combination of uh, row and column write signals uh, should allow it to, because the inhibit current um, will subtract from the sum of the row and column write currents. Dropping the total current uh, below the threshold. This is uh, this is working in a uh, slightly similar way uh, to a uh, residual current device that has a Ferranti transformer that uh, keeps track of the sum of currents and if it becomes non-zero it will trip the, the breaker. Then the same principle of operation. So I will, I will probably be doing some work on uh, this ferrite core memory. The construction of uh, the memory itself uh, uses a lot of wire. Because uh, for every row and every column, well, there's also the erase wire passing through all the cores um, of the, the operational registers and the first uh, accumulator register. The additional registers uh, I showed you before using those, uh, those columns of keys. They are not uh, included uh, in the erase loop and the erase loop is uh, activated by pressing the L key. This, uh, this basically passes a pulse of, cur of current uh, for all the cores uh, of the operational registers and uh, the main accumulator. clearing the contents uh, of the memory. In the earlier version of the Semtron machine, the clear key also activated the logic uh, because it was uh, coupled with a relay in the power supply. But uh, this uh, being a uh, 1970s version uh, has done away with that feature. Anyway, back to the memory. As you see, the, the core, through each uh, one of the core, we've got uh, two column and dressing lines, uh, one for writing and uh, the other one for reading. And uh, two row and dressing lines, one for writing and one for reading. And uh, the lines and uh, the directions, uh, it would be optimal if it was done uh, as an uh, H bridge, like uh, controlling the bottom half um, of the line and uh, and the top half of the line, but it's uh, it's not done this way. Instead, uh, we've got uh, separate uh, 
amplifiers for for the <coughs> right and uh, and read lines. Pretty complicated, but I think that uh, the design uh, principle behind this was uh, reducing the amount of uh, electronics uh, needed, uh, the amount of uh, of circuitry, the number of transistors, while uh, not really caring that much about. Um, the amount of wire used uh, for making the ferrite core memory. The amount of cores uh, would stay the same, but uh, it's just um, like halving the, the wire passing through it. And this... Uh, also leads to an interesting conclusion about how the machine was engineered. Since uh, it was made in the 1960s and 70s, uh, Eastern Germany, semiconductors uh, were not really that cheap back then. So uh, limiting the number of transistors uh, was pretty important. Uh, Almost uh, all of those transistors uh, are Germanian transistors, not silicon ones. Uh, the only silicon transistors we've got on the upper side uh, Nixi tube driver board. Basically, I um, Darlington uh, array driving the high side and then the plates. Because um, this machine uses multiplexing on the Nixie tubes, this part uh, drives the anodes tube by tube, and then the next part drives the cathodes, displaying the numbers. Also, uh, silicon transistors. So for every for every digit, uh, the position amplifier is activated, and one of the digit uh, cathode amplifiers is uh, also activated. Pretty interesting that um, this used uh, multiplexing. Way back when, uh, before the age of uh, integrated circuits, well, the Americans uh, had integrated circuits, but uh, they were not really a thing uh, in our part of the world. Western tech uh, had um, access to that tech, but the Soviet world uh, and the satellite states like Poland, like uh, Czechoslovakia, like Hungary, and uh, like uh, East Germany. They mainly used vacuum tubes in those times. And if they used semiconductors, they would use discrete components rather than uh, integrated circuits. The ICs would um, become uh, much more widespread uh, in uh, the 70s, let alone in the 80s. I've got some more modules. Mainly with, uh, with logic functions uh, for the operations. Every one of those modules uh, is uh, placed in uh, a particular position of the cage uh, of the arithmetic logic unit. 
and all of those modules have a pair of uh, 31 uh, contact connectors. Uh, those connectors were pretty popular in um, the East uh, Germany. All, all the traces were hand drawn, covered with solder. And uh, the PCB design uh, is uh, mighty complex. And this is the case for every single one of those uh, printed circuit board. It was an uh, absolute marvel of uh, Eastern uh, engineering. And the aluminum cover. It was, of course, uh, die cast aluminum. Manufacturer's marking 220 would be the Semtron uh, 220. Don't know about um, the other numbers. Uh, this would be the cover manufacturer. Before I put it all together, maybe I should show you the front part of, uh, of the machine. At some point, uh, I did live streams uh, of my attempts to fix the machine. Gotta take a screwdriver to get there. And the Semtron uh, has uh, two latches on the sides uh, in the front. Here and on the opposite side, it's pretty much like the IBM Selectric. I could even argue that uh, the VE bureau machine and work uh, in Simberda that would be pretty much an uh, equivalent uh, the East German uh, equivalent of uh, IBM they may they were the descendants of uh, the old uh, Rhein metal uh, factory that made uh, mechanical calculators, they made uh, typewriters and uh, Simtron uh, also made uh, mechanical calculators before moving on to the computer-ish stuff. Uh, let's wipe those nexus. Uh, Then the decimal points are marked uh, with uh, light bulbs. None of that LED rubbish. And there's uh, one more light bulb uh, located uh, on the right side indicating the minus sign. All those nexies, uh, they are placed on the printed circuit boards along with the light bulbs. The, the light bulbs are soldered into the PCB, making the replacement pretty complicated. 
Look at that PCB. There's a uh, pretty complicated wafer switch uh, for selecting the decimal point. And of course, there's the keyboard. I did take it apart uh, at some point uh, on one of my streams uh, in order to fix it. This is purely mechanical. If I turn it around... Watching out for the electrons falling out. Taking a closer look at uh, the bottom side, uh, I won't be taking off the cover, but uh, we can see it's also a printed circuit board. And it has uh, the key stems um, passing through the slots um, of the PCB. And there's a uh, blocking string passing through the stems not allowing them uh, to get out of uh, of the PCB or of the keyboard. And there are mechanical switches uh, under the keys. Those uh, orange things uh, you can see through the slots. They are mechanical switches. Uh, the typical limit switch variety found in uh, the East German uh, automation. So, let's put it back together. I can use the extractor tool to replace the latches. And of course, uh, it's screwing the things. Uh, But I will do it uh, with the cover in place. And by the way, this is the main switch. Just pull it forward uh, to turn on the machine. It was a little bit un unintuitive uh, when I got the machine. Like, uh, how the hell do I turn it on?
Hand Tumor and Free Screws. Where do I have them? Time for the new ones then. So that would be it for this magnificent machine. I might be making another video on the internals and schematics of how things work and how the East Germans drew those schematics uh, in a very strange way. And uh, this is um, the German plug uh, used in the machine. It's not the IEC C13. It's different. Fortunately, I had a uh, plug uh, of this type kicking around in my lab. So I didn't have a problem with uh, not being uh, able to power the machine, I didn't have to solder any wires uh, in an uh, ugly way to get it going. So, that would be one more repaired museum exhibit for my lab museum. And I'm very happy of this project because it's been over a year. It has been waiting for, for me to repair it. I was losing hope um, that I can uh, ever repair it. And you might ask why uh, I was able to fix it in the first place. It was because uh, a friend uh, named Conrad, uh, gave me a spare arithmetic logic unit as soon as I recognized uh, what this was. Because uh, he only knew that uh, it was some uh, old computer or calculator stuff, but uh, he didn't know the details. And I knew, I knew it uh, right away because uh, I had uh, the Semtron, I knew uh, how the ALU looks like. It's a, uh, it's a cage, um, it's a cage of uh, 12 uh, boards with a common backplate. With, uh, with buses, with connections. On the on the backplate, uh, connecting those uh, sockets uh, from below, and uh, the interfaces uh, from the board. Uh, we've got a nice uh, cable bundle. It's laced uh, NASA style. And going uh, all the way to the sockets. Those two sockets would be meant for connecting the test uh, fixture 
used at the Semtron factory. This would be the power supply uh, connector. This would be for the <laughs> for the decimal point switch, I guess. And then we've got uh, the keyboard. Uh, we've got the Nexi controllers. Uh, You just uh, you just have to um, take care not to jumble those connectors because those two are identical. The first one uh, are are identical as well, and uh, the big 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 uh, black plug uh, on the second connector it's just a uh, jumper block. Removing it. Uh, cuts off the clock generator because the test fixture had its own uh, clock generator and uh, it also allowed to um, manually uh, advance um, the counters in uh, the calculator for the diagnostic purposes so uh, we had um, the options of uh, 25 hertz uh, we have the option of uh, 1 kilohertz we had um, the normal um, option of um, 25 uh, kilohertz if i'm correct uh, and we also had uh, the option of manual advance for testing the particular circuits as for other equipment uh, for servicing those uh, Semtron uh, calculators, uh, there were riser boards uh, that would uh, basically transfer the 62 contacts uh, on both, both connectors. Uh, let me grab the extractor. You just uh, you just put the riser board uh, in the slot and then uh, put the board uh, you are troubleshooting uh, in the connector of the riser board. So you had uh, free access uh, to all the traces and connections and parts uh, you could. Um, Test it with, uh, with the meter, you could test it with the scope. That would make uh, working on um, the calculator way easier. Instead of that, I had to put it on its side and poke around with the meter and the scope um, on the backplate. Like... Uh, looking for looking for the contact um, on the connector that interested me based on the schematics and then uh, checking the signal if uh, if the voltage or waveform was correct and believe me without uh, without the massive uh, reverse engineering and uh, archiving uh, project uh, semtron.org I wouldn't be able to fix this machine it's only because of that project uh, I was able to um, troubleshoot the thing uh, to know, uh, to have any idea how it worked at all so Thanks to all the brilliant people behind the semtron.org webpage for making the repair of, uh, of my calculator possible at all. It has been quite a ride. 
And yes, I will show you the schematics and internals of the calculator at some point. <coughs> so, for the time being, stay determined and carry on. Bye.